Good morning. Um, this is our third uh, chapter in the book of Colossians. And uh, I thought we'd start with a word of prayer. This is the prayer for uh, Stephan, the first martyr of the church, which is the text for this coming Sunday. And so let us bow in prayer. We give you thanks, O Lord of glory, for the example of Stephan, the first martyr, who looked to heaven and prayed for his persecutors. Grant that we also may pray for our enemies and seek forgiveness for those who hurt us through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. I pray that uh, Bible study is going well for you in this um, this time of change uh, as we use uh, this new format for doing Bible study instead of being face-to-face -face, uh, this morning. We are looking at the third uh, chapter in the book of Colossians, and I'd like to begin uh, reading that uh, third chapter, and you can follow along uh, online or in your Bibles this morning. Third chapter, verse 1. So if you have been raised with Christ, seek the things that are above where Christ is. Seated at the right hand of God. Set your minds on things that are above, not on things that are on earth. For you have died, and your life is hidden with Christ in God. When Christ, who is your life, is revealed, then you also will be revealed with him in glory. Put to death, therefore, whatever in you is earthly, fornication, impurity, passion, evil desires, and greed, which is idolatry. On account of these, the wrath of God is coming on those who are disobedient. These are the ways you also once followed when you were living that life. But now you must get rid of all such things, anger, wrath, malice, slander, and abusive language from your mouth. Do not lie to one another, seeing that you have stripped off the old self with its practices and have clothed yourselves with the new self, which is being renewed in knowledge according to the image of its creator. In that renewal there is no longer Greek and Jew, circumcised and uncircumcised, Barian, Scythian, slave, and free, but Christ is all and in all. As God chose one, holy and beloved, clothe yourselves with compassion, kindness, humility, meekness, and patience. Bear with one another. If anyone has a complaint against another, forgive each other. Just as the Lord has forgiven you, so you also must forgive. Above all, Clothe yourselves with love, which binds everything together in perfect harmony. And let the peace of Christ rule in your hearts, to which indeed you are called in the one body, and be thankful. Let the word of Christ dwell in you richly, teach and admonish one another in all wisdom, and with gratitude in your hearts sing psalms and hymns and spiritual songs to God. And whatever you do in word or deed, do everything in the name of the Lord Jesus, giving thanks to God the Father through him. Wives, be subject to your husbands, as is fitting in the Lord. Husbands, love your wives, never treat them harshly. Children, obey your parents in everything, for this is your acceptable duty to the Lord. Fathers, do not provoke your children or they may lose heart. Slaves, obey your earthly masters in everything, not only while being watched and in order to please them, but wholeheartedly fearing the Lord. Whatever your task, put yourselves into it as done for the Lord and not for your masters, since you know that from the Lord you will receive the inheritance as your reward. You serve the Lord Christ. For the wrongdoer will be paid back for whatever wrong has been done, and there is no partiality. Here ends the reading 
of that uh, third chapter uh, in Colossians. So again, again at the beginning, uh, looking at uh, the first few verses of this third chapter, again, we're coming off from the second chapter and uh, a little bit of what Paul has been talking about um, is that uh, we are in Christ. Uh, we'll, we're built into him and in him, uh, our, our salvation is established. Um, and then don't be follow, um, tempted to follow um, different teachings and different teachers who would draw us away from the centrality, this, the, the importance of Christ. Uh, Christ is the one thing that holds us together and uh, gives us hope. So then uh, Paul now begins, uh, if that's true, right, if we are uh, if we are perfected in Christ, if Christ is the one on whom our salvation depends, so then we are encouraged by Paul, the first couple of verses. So if you have been raised with Christ, then seek the things that are above where Christ is. You can imagine what how hard that is to, to hear, and yet how also encouraging that it's not about you, but... Um, the change that is to take place in you is done because Christ now lives in you. You have been raised in Christ. Uh, death has no power over you. Um, the grave has no power over you. You are a part of Christ's body. And so the power of resurrection resides in you. And you are in Christ, seated at the right hand of God. So this is a place of honor. So uh, this is where your mind needs to be, be um, focused. So verse 2 then, set your minds on things that are above, not, a, not on things that are on the earth. So if you have died and your life is hidden with Christ and God, when Christ, who is your life, is revealed, then you also will be revealed with him in glory. Um, setting your mind on things that are above. I don't think this is just a, a mind over matter. Uh, Paul is not describing this uh, in that way. Paul is basically saying that you have the power of the resurrection behind this living in Christ. Um, you may falter, but Forgiveness is yours, and get back up and continue to live your life uh, in Christ. So then we go on to uh, verse 5. How can we do this? And it doesn't sound like an easy task, and, and Paul, I think, recognizes that. So he's not talking about it as just a mind over matter. He's actually talking about a new birth. So put to death, verse 5, put to death, therefore, whatever in you is earthly. And he starts naming these things that are earthly, fornication, impurity, passion, evil desire, and greed. These are things that we're familiar. These have controlled our lives. Now, Paul is saying, don't let these things control, but live in the power of the resurrected Christ. Um, clothe yourselves, therefore, verse 10, uh, with the new self. This is a, a part of the image of the new self, is that we don't let these things control us. Uh, which is being renewed. Uh, again, I like that because it's talking about there are times when you need to start over again. We are being renewed in knowledge according to the image of its creator. So if Christ has created this new self in you, um, you are constantly going back to that new self as you begin over again, as you deal with your sinful self. Um, so then in that renewal, the, it doesn't matter who you are. You are no longer, it's no longer Greek or Jew, circumcised or even uncircumcised, barbarian, Scythian, slave or free. But Christ is all and in all. Again, the breadth of uh, the invitation is much larger than we thought. Um, and so the invitation is for all people. Um, I like one of the questions here then that um, my study Bible raises here. Notice how examples of taking off and putting on clothes 
are used to describe how Christians stop acting in old negative ways and now act according to the new ways of the Christian life. I don't know if you've thought about that, uh, how often we change our clothes depending on the situation. Uh, certainly when you go to a, uh, an elaborate party uh, and you've been invited, uh, you don't put on your everyday clothes, but you change your clothes and you put on new clothes to fit that occasion. Uh, likewise, if you go to, um, to do some exercise, you probably are not wearing things that you would not want to have sweaty and, and start smelling like sweat. You would certainly clothe yourself in an attire that uh, befits the activity. And so um, Paul is inviting us, therefore, to consider ourselves being clothed anew in Christ. And this is going to take on uh, a nuance, both as uh, for us. If you've ever been at a party where you're underdressed, you feel awkward. Uh, likewise, clothes then define a little bit of who we are and what the activity is going to be. So as we look at putting on this new life, clothing ourselves, in, and, and Paul starts enumerating that compassion and kindness and humility and meekness, and patience, the clothing that we put on, these new uh, ways of looking at life and new ways of conducting our lives will begin to influence <clears throat> our lives, will change who we are and how we address our world. And then uh, I like verse 14, above, above all, clothe yourselves with love. This is the one clothing, the one uh, trait, characteristic of the Christian faith then, which binds both our our life, our old life, the struggles we have with our old life, and the newness in which we embrace the new life in Christ. This is how perfect harmony is kept in order. So love for self, love for neighbor, love for God. Um, love binds us and, and holds us, captures us, and clothes us in the very nature of God because God is love. Colossians uh, 3, uh, verses 8 through 14, provides examples of behaviors to get rid of and new ones to take on. What are some of the neg negative old ways of living that you want to take off? Think about that. What are some, some clothings uh, that you have, uh, you know, clothed yourself in, attitudes, uh, characteristics that you want to get rid of? And what are some of the new ways of living that you want to put on? So Paul, is it's an invitation. And as he writes to these people in Colossae, he's inviting them into this new life. Um, he's not assuming that they have this new life all taken care of, but he's inviting them into it. Um, Christ will clothe you as you follow Christ. Uh, the attitude of love and compassion and kindness, humility, meekness. These are things that you're going to see and you're going to emulate. This is where the glory of God will be seen and revealed in you. And then finally, um, a confusing uh, addition, as if the life of faith is not confusing enough. Uh, we are then invited into the rules of the Christian household, is the way it's titled in my study Bible. A very interesting um, text here, probably m most controversial part of the Colossians uh, letter. So wives, be subject to your husbands as is fitting in the Lord. And husbands, love your wives and never treat them harshly. Um, this 13.4 through chapter 4, 1, wives and husbands and children in the ancient world, there were instructions that established proper conduct for the members of a household, for wives and husbands, children and parents and slaves and masters. Here they are being modified for a Christian household, so that love for each other and respect for the Lord becomes the guiding value of family life. If you want to understand a little bit more, it suggests that we also look at Ephesians chapter 5, verse 21, through Ephesians chapter 6, verse 9. So uh, these verses then, in these verses, Paul describes some guidelines for how People of a household should treat one another. How does faith in Christ affect your family relationships? 
Now, I'm not assuming that everyone has everything together here because this is a, a trying um, uh, thing. We don't we don't always come with guide uh, books and instructions here as we come into marriage or into family. Uh, certainly, I know that Joan and I, as we got married, uh, there was no great guide other than watching our parents and maybe listening uh, to good guidance from different people. Um, these were not innate in us, so we had to discover them. So I think, again, that uh, that nature of loving self, forgiving each other when we do wrong, is an important piece of that. Um, <clears throat> as much as we want to follow Christ and do what is right, I think we uh, all recognize that we uh, fail often. And so then forgiveness becomes an important piece. So it says, children, obey your parents in everything. This is your acceptable duty in the Lord. Seeing obedience not as some, some um, attitude that is created out of the great people that our parents are. But treating them because and treating them in this way, in this honorable way, uh, we are doing something that is acceptable to God and it honors God. So sometimes our parents are not always easy to honor and, and be obedient to, right? Uh, but God is asking us to do so out of obedience to the Lord. And then I, I love this because it takes a little bit further. Often we hear the commandments, uh, honor your father and your mother. But I love this verse 21 in chapter 3. Fathers, do not provoke your children or they may lose heart. They may not only lose heart, they may lose your respect. And so looking at ways to not provoke our children, uh, if obedience is what the Lord demands of them, then we also have a commandment from Christ as we put on and clothe um, characteristics that uh, provide good guidance so that we do not provoke our children. And that, this is kind of uh, controversial in our time, understanding the difference between the time set of the New Testament and also where we are uh, societally. Uh, verse 22 brings up this whole issue of how slaves are to um, um, react to their masters. But also maybe we need to read into that and how masters are meant to react and interact with their slaves. So verse 22, slaves, obey your earthly masters. Um, and here again, uh, the idea of um, uh, earthly masters. Um, are also um, uh, the ones whom God has placed and in our our midst to protect as well. So there was, there was a, a little bit different societal um, uh, dynamic going on. So our earthly masters in everything, not only while being watched or to please them, but wholeheartedly uh, fearing the Lord. Um, Fearing is not a fear as in the word phobos, meaning afraid, but fear more in awe. So as we are awed by the, 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 the Lord who has loved us, uh, there is a part of that wholehearted uh, of watching over and caring for um, our earthly masters. Um, we might also say that we still live with earthly masters and uh, need to be aware of our earthly masters. Maybe I don't realize it. The laws that govern our even driving uh, are masters for us. They are laws that are written for us. They don't, we don't see a human being behind them, but they are meant to be honored because in so doing, we protect each other and watch over each other. So in this time of coronavirus, um, I'm, uh, I'm well aware of the fact that I may be a part of the 90 percentile or the 95 percentile that's not going to get coronavirus. But not knowing that, um, a part of the, the law and rule of the time is to honor the fact that at this time, wearing a mask is not only protection for me, who may be a part of that 90, 95 percentile that's not going to get coronavirus. But it is in honoring the fact that I don't know that, and so I'm, I must protect my neighbor. I must look after my neighbor. In a sense, those laws are my master too. It's not just a human being, 
but we need to expand our thoughts about that. And then whatever your task, um, you know, do it, uh, put yourself into it, uh, is done for the Lord and not for your masters. Since you know that from the Lord you will receive the inheritance as your reward. I don't necessarily think that we think about inheritance here, but that what the reward, the inheritance is um, a good orderly society. And that's part of that. Um, without following our masters, whether it's a human relationship master or whether it's a rule of society that masters us, uh, we serve God well by serving society well. So for the wrongdoer, we'll be repaid back for whatever wrong has been done. And there's no partiality. And sometimes this is the part of the natural law. If I drive 80 miles an hour, um, part of the natural law is I'm probably putting other people at, at danger. And the point is that um, when that when that danger comes, um, uh, an object going 80 miles an hour hitting a tree, there's no forgiveness here. So there is, you know, if I if I take my mask off and expose myself to coronavirus. Um, I can't come back and say, well, you know, I, I belong to Christ. And so, therefore, I shouldn't be angry when I have put myself at risk. There's no partiality here. You will run the risk of not obeying uh, those advises and those rules about how we are dealing with each other socially in this uh, time of uh, coronavirus. Uh, so we have to be careful about that. I hope this helps us a little bit as we look at uh, chapter three. Um, encourage you uh, to once again, um, I'm going to put the questions out and, and have, give you a chance to respond to some of them. And hopefully still at the end of our time together, uh, we're going to have a Zoom meeting and, and just kind of discuss uh, these different uh, questions in a more uh, informal setting. So let us close with a word of prayer. Gracious God, thank you for this day. Thank you for this time together. Be with us as we look at your word. Help us to see new ways in which it uh, influences and changes how we look at our lives. Bless us this week and be with us, we pray in your son's precious name. Amen. Go in peace. Serve the Lord. Thanks be to God.